Today we're going to be looking at a scenario of a Pakistan and Indian nuclear escalation. The Pakistan and Indian um, kind of flash, it's one of the known flashpoints for a possible nuclear escalation point. Um, they've had an ongoing border dispute now for several decades and you know, I'm going to avoid getting into the historical aspect of it and some of the results of some of the uh, colonial empire colonialism and how things were divvied up but suffice to say that they do have a significant border dispute it has flared up at different points and both are nuclear armed nations uh, when we're looking at it India has right around they're, they're both very similar and the number of warheads they possess. It's right around 160 to 165. Um, India has air, uh, land, and sea-based weapons, and Pakistan has air and land-based weapons, although they are working and testing a sea-based uh, weapon as well. Um, when you look at the actual sizes of their yields, um, if you a lot of them are variable yield weapons, or we're not exactly sure the yield on them. But if you were to look at the full arsenal for India, it'd be somewhere between 1.1 to 2.3 megatons worth of uh, yield on their combined warheads. And for Pakistan, it'd be about somewhere between 1.2 to 3.2 megatons. And I'll go ahead and flash um, what those forces look like this is from the bulletin of atomic scientists so you know take that what it is obviously this is known information classified information would probably have more details may list a different number but this is what we're going to go with and so in this scenario both countries decide they're going to strike simultaneously and because these are all shorter based weapons and they have very short distance to travel if it's a decision for one country to strike before the others it gives them a significant advantage when i ran the simulation again or i'm sorry previously ran the simulation um, it really depended on who launched first um, so in this scenario they're going to both launch at the same time so neither one has a distinct advantage and I'm going to run this pretty simple with, I'm sorry, in the United States. Let's keep them out of it. So for India, and they're going to have 100% of their force. And they're going to go for maximum casualties with an 80% civilian strike and a 20% military strike. So 80% counter value, 20% counter force. And so they're both going to use the same strike protocol and so for India they're going to target Pakistan and now I'm going to drop down and I'm going to switch over to Pakistan and they're going to do the same protocol 100% of their force with 80% counter value 20% counter force let's go ahead and run this out I'm going to start running it fairly slow because this isn't going to take a long time to get there, but probably have to um, speed things up a little bit. You see some of the fighter jets are taking off. Um, India has about 48 warheads on their air-based fighters, and Pakistan's about 36. So, and then respectively... Uh, Pakistan has 126 land-based launchers, and India has 64. So, let's see here. So this is 10 times speed up, so, you know, that it's going to take, you know, it'd still take a certain amount of time, but obviously it'd be much less than, say, if a Russia... In the United States or China in the United States because of the distance the missiles would have to travel the majority of missiles would have to travel so you're seeing some touchdown points already so we're seeing some some of the stuff going off India population wise has a significant advantage in that 
they are the second most populated country in the world behind China. And so both land, depth, and population, India has a significant advantage. Pakistan has a relatively narrow front, um, much lower population-wise. Um, on the downside for India, they also have a very large land border with China and disputed areas there. And so that would obviously be another area that they would have to significant concern, whereas Pakistan and China have had a um, long-standing, let's say, mutual um, cooperation. I'm always hesitant to use the word alliances um, in geopolitics. It's just, you know, we see how much allies, you know, <laughs> how much it works out sometimes. But um, see this, I'm going to take this to, let's go to 30, just to speed things up a little bit more. So we still see uh, stuff hitting off. And, and now, so India also has 16 sea based warheads. Um, I didn't necessarily include them, or I did. So they do have their sub there, so, or warship. Um, sorry. So, <clears throat> let's go. I'm going to take this just a little bit faster so I don't put everybody to sleep. So, plus I really want a beer right now. Kind of experimenting. I got a green screen, but I haven't decided to set it up yet. I decided I wanted to put myself into some of the videos now. And if you haven't seen it yet, and I can tell by the views that most people haven't i started doing like kind of a video log thing i used to do a blog and a lot of people thought it was pretty funny and entertaining and so i try to be a little more serious on these simulation videos but on this one it's a lot more lighthearted. so i've been posting some of those so i would encourage you to check it out and see if you like it and if you do that's awesome and if you don't like it well you know you don't like it so Usually people aren't too hesitant to let you know when they don't like something. And look, there's no accounting for taste. I think it's remarkable. So, But still looking at some of the branch out stuff too. I mean, I know nuclear war simulation videos can only take you so far, but I think it is interesting seeing some of this stuff and dispelling a lot of the rumors and um, misinformation and stuff that's been passed over time. All right, so everything that was going to go off has went off. So let's go ahead and take a look at what ends up happening here. Oh, wow. So what you see here is the casualties are pretty similar, which makes pretty good sense because um, they have a similar number of warheads. Pakistan does have a slightly greater yield, um, possibly. But on the flip side of that, India has a much larger land area. And so their population is larger, but also going to be more spread out. And you see a large portion of uh, Pakistan is densely populated versus a wide open expanse. Um, percentage of total population, India would be able to absorb that five point, almost 5.6 million losses better than Pakistan would at 5.1 million. Afghanistan also s suffered casualties. Of course, Afghanistan and Pakistan share a border. And when you look at fallout and everything, there's that. There's going to be some level of that taking place. Um, not a large amount, but there would be. Not to mention you have a large Afghan population living in Pakistan. There's a lot of things. There's a gentleman on Twitter that... I follow and follows me as well um, because of DCS, Digital Combat Simulator, which is a flight simulator, and he's from Pakistan. He's been posting a lot about people that have been, Afghans that have been living in Pakistan for quite some time and basically wanting them to leave and that they're not Pakistani just because they've been in that region and planted themselves there. And I'm not from that area, so I'm not going to comment on the validity of that because 
again that's not my world experience so I don't know um, but clearly Pakistan and United States would be two different countries whereas the United States you know if you're born in that country you've been there you know you're a citizen and so um, and most of us haven't been here for hundreds and thousands of years um, you know even if you go back everybody immigrated into the United States or North America at some point whether it was thousands of years ago or more recently let's take a look here see if there's any other significant casualty zones doesn't look like anything too much um, I want to check out and see and I don't think yeah didn't see any losses in China um, we'll look at um, where's India. So India with over a billion people, 1.3 billion people, that 5.6 million, obviously a high number, but still a very low percentage of that population overall, even having went nuclear. Now, that's not to say what more long-term effects may happen. So can't rule out that. Whereas with Pakistan, 188 million much larger percentage of the population there you're looking at um, somewhere around 2.5 and this is just some rough hillbilly math here you know 2.5 percent of the population um, that's a significant chunk of change right there um, rolled up um, so that would be nothing to uh, shake your head at so if this conflict ever went nuclear, the casualties in a very short amount of time would be very, very high. Um, having said that, I know you can look at you know, global warming, after effects. There was Carl Sagan and others um, who in the 80s said that even with their limited amount of stockpiles that it would cause a nuclear winter and it would have a significant impact the world over and again, I'm not an expert in this stuff, so I'm not going to say that that's overblown, but I think that there was also concern at one point that in Desert Storm, or in the, or say the uh, first Gulf War, um, that if those uh, Kuwaiti oil fields were set on fire, that it would do the same thing. And the reality was we found out it didn't. And I you know, honestly think we don't know. We have models and stuff, but... It probably would not significantly impact um, the rest of the world to a large degree other than the fact that anytime you have 10 million people loss of life and a lot of destruction um, and you have industry and you have trade and the whole world's connected now so it would have a huge impact there would it in the world in the humanity no it would not end humanity um, it wouldn't even necessarily end um, India as a functioning country now whether Pakistan could take that kind of loss and survive as a complete nation again that's hard to say um, especially because you know government centers would be targeted so you would lose a lot of that government infrastructure and especially an area that has a lot of tribal history going back for you know centuries um, you could see that they could potentially have some type of balkanization go on there. But that's all speculation, so. All right. Well, as they say, educate, do not annihilate. Or annihilate, push the button and see what happens. You know, sometimes when I read some comments on YouTube, I think maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But have a great evening, everybody. Thank you.